gracious. Take a full sweep on the radar, Max McGee. Yes, sir. There has to be a planetary object if there's an atmosphere. Without an atmosphere, there can't be thunder and lightning. If the radar vex doesn't pick up a thing, Rocky, nothing at all. Professor Newton, really? is it possible that at one time there were sister moons with a single atmosphere, but who have drifted apart? Could they still be tied together by something we could call an atmosphere chain? A possibility, Rocky. Yes, a definite possibility. I get it, and right now we're passing through that atmosphere chain. That's only a supposition, Winky. Very good, Bobby. You get an A in mathematics. Now for literature. You are to read this and write a book report. Oh, sure, Venus. The Odyssey. Hey, Venus, this is poetry. Mm -hmm. Venus, this book was written thousands of years ago. Well, I know a heap more than this guy, Homer. Why waste my time? Bobby, you are to read the Odyssey and write me a report. Ah, oh, Venus, this one's Saturn. What's the trouble, Vina? <laughs> a slight case of mutiny in the schoolroom. I've got to read poetry. The Odyssey, an epic poem by Homer. It's enough to make a guy flip his space helmet. It's a fine book, Bobby. Sure, for girls, maybe. But what's in it for us men, Rocky? Why, back there, they hadn't much more than invented the wheel. Granted, Bobby, there have been incredible changes in science and knowledge, but men still have the same desire to explore. You can learn a lot from the Odyssey. Looks like I jammed my rockets. That's right, Bobby. You're stuck. Poetry. Oh, it isn't poetry the way you mean, Bobby. It's blank verse. Sizzling Saturn. I'm madder than a hatter. Rocky, there's an object coming in on radar, Vex. Chapter one, Bobby. Start reading. Oh, Bobby, you'll meet a man named Ulysses, who's in for plenty of adventure and excitement on his way back to Ithaca. Oh, uh, Rocky, it appears to be a solid mass, approximately 2,000 miles in diameter. Yes, there appears to be movement. Hmm, must be a gypsy moon. A what, Rocky? A gypsy moon. It's not anchored in space and therefore not native to any single system. Oh, Winky, have you altered course to approach the object? Yes, sir, but there's nothing on physiograph yet, only the lightning and the thunder. Are you searching for a sister moon, Rocky? Another gypsy, perhaps? No, Professor, but the atmosphere chain has to have another terminal. Mm -hmm. Quick, Winky, focus 10 o'clock on Visiograph. 10 o'clock, sir. Hey, that isn't a spaceship. It's an airplane. Goodness gracious. I get it. That airplane uses this atmosphere chain as a sort of a traffic lane. Professor Newton, go in with Vina and Bobby. Vina, Bobby, secure in your blast off chair. Strange aircraft ahead. Ready to return fire, sir. No, Inky. Orbit jet, the XB-2, to unknown airship. The XB-2 calling unknown airship. Come in. XB-2 to airship. Hold fire. Trek Samo, Quotanda. We're on return flight to home planet Earth. We have no desire to conquer or even explore. like the Thunder and Lightning's on their ball team. Here she comes again, Rocky. Shall I return fire? No, hold fire. Give me an exterior check. Temperature 100.43 and diminishing. Escape velocity from atmosphere 4.7. Moisture is now... Rocky, she's on our tail and coming fast. Can I return fire? Exterior check. 
condition exosphere. Full power. All she's got, sir. Once we passed out of the atmosphere, we slammed the door in their faces. That's right. They can't fly in outer space. But why didn't you return fire and destroy the buzzard? Winky, there's no point in taking advantage of them. They were afraid of us. We probably never saw a spaceship before. Vina, Bobby, Professor Newton, you may come forward. I wonder what kind of city lies beyond that wall. What kind of people live there? Not very friendly ones, I'd say. Better watch it, mister. You're about to crash. Super stellar. Come on, Rocky. Let's go meet the people. Yes, Rocky. Why don't we? We're outside the Space Ranger communication van. You know, of course, the report will go to Secretary Drake that we're lost in space. Oh, so Drake gets another wrinkle. We've given him plenty. Exploring the gypsy moons will take months. But Rocky, men just have to explore. You said so yourself. Even back in the time of the Odyssey, you were making me leave. Rocky, we must act now. There's no telling where those gypsy moons may go. We may never find them again. All right, you've convinced me. I'll try to send a message which conveys friendship before attempting a landing. This is Rocky Jones in the XV-2. This is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet, licensed in the Space Ranger service as the XV-2. Rex Raul von Vexitor. Von Welle von Vexitor. I know you can't understand my words, but I hope my voice carries friendship. Von Welle von Vexitor. We're preparing to land and hope for a friendly meeting when we translate each other's language. Secure, Professor. We are unarmed. There is nothing to fear. Von Welle von Vexitor. The Vowel. Alert, learn this. Alert, learn this. Prepare for landing, secure. Terrain unknown. Winky, give me a 90 degree air signal on the child. Air signal in, sir. Skipper, there's a strong starboard tail pull. It's, it's like we're being magnetized. Full power on starboard rocket, sir. Full starboard rocket, sir. We can't fight that pole. It's counteracting full port side, sir. It's not my doing. Give me an altitude countdown. 65,000, sir. 60,000. 55,000. 50,000. 50,000. 45,000. 40,000. 35,000. 30,000. 25,000. 20, no use, Winky. When a pinwheel drop, and can't pull out. Save the rockets, Winky. Fix 
Warum wollen wir nichts tun? Well, the merry-go-round's over. Who grabbed the brass ring? I'd say all of us, Winky. Alert and learn this. Learn this. We have landed successfully. You may unsecure and come forward. Hey, Rocky, that was a cinch, huh? Oh, yes, Bobby, a cinch. Well, goodness gracious. Nice-looking people. They attempted to kill us. No telling what they'll do now. Winky. Yes, sir? Open the tail section hatch and keep out of sight. They don't know what they expect to find, but curiosity will bring them forward. Aye, right, sir. Gunnar and Bobby, keep out of sight in the second section. Vina. Yes, Rocky? Take your phones to the translator. They'll probably speak when they see you, so get a tune-in on their language as soon as possible. All right, Rocky. And Vina, don't worry. If they make a move, we'll be able to handle them. A great many of their words start with quo, and there's a free usage of consonants. Hmm. Say something more, Rocky. I need correction on exchange language balance. You can't understand us now, but this machine will translate our languages and write the words for you to read. A perfect tuning, I believe, Rocky. If you please. Vina. All set, Rocky. We're locked in trans language. Thank you, Vina. May I introduce myself? Rocky Jones, commander of the spaceship in the service of the Space Rangers with headquarters on the planet Earth. Queen Dante, Queen Tampo. <laughs> the man in there is amazed. He just said, goodness gracious, exactly like Professor Newton. <laughs> Speak. Speak into this, please. Don Juan Bovaro. Vintomovex. This is the man speaking. His name is Bavaro. His wife, Hotanda. They're the rulers of this moon called Pogita. Bavaro, what is the name of the other moon which links Posita with the atmosphere chain? It is called Nagato. Electricity even governs their language. The names Posita and Nagato must come from the opposite electrical poles, positive and negative. Doesn't sound like they get along very well together. Well, may I introduce my crew? The young lady with me is Vina. And in your compartment, Professor Newton, Bobby, and Winky. Professor Newton? Dopey? Think 
key. Well, that's close enough. A quintando vortex. Quintanda. Rocky, he's offering us friendship and rewards. Great secrets about electricity. Anything we want. Yes, Vema. But in return, he wants us to blast Nagato. He has a bomb which, if dropped, would leave Nagato in ruins. But so far, the defending airships have made that impossible. He knows that we can stand off in space, out of reach, and do the job. Rocky, he talks like a madman. Destroying Nagato. Destroying Nagato, he keeps saying. Otanda's talking now. She wants me to be her friend. She's inviting me to go to her castle. But I'm not chance leaving the spaceship. Vavaro demands an answer. We have no alternative, he says. We must obey his command. Kutanda's our only chance. Let me go with her and become friends. Kutanda, will you come in here, please? Venus shall be your guest. And Bavaro, will you remain in there so that you can answer my questions about the war between Pazita and Nagato? Mina? That's right, Kotanda. Quacky boy. <laughs> no, Kotanda. Rocky, Joan. <laughs> Professor, I sure hope it works out all right. By your own words, Bavaro, you are the aggressor in the war with Nagato. No, Bavaro. There isn't a threat you can make that will change my mind. Well, he's not going to murder us, at least not right now. But he orders us to abandon the spaceship and travel on foot to the far side of the moon. We'll have to exist as best we can. He's sure that in time it will force us to change our minds. And Zena? She'll be kept prisoner in the castle until we do change our minds until we agree to destroy Nagato for them. He says he has a way to control Vina's mind so that she will soon despise us, unless we do what he asks. Concentrated direction. See if we can cut through that wall. Aye, aye, sir. Ready, Winky? Standing by, sir. Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. Shall we try a full salvo, sir? Save missiles, Winky. Won't do any good. Oh, Rocky. Yes, Bobby. You know that book you started me reading, The Odyssey? Well, this man, this Ulysses you told me about, is on his way back home to Ithaca after the war with Troy. And in that war, Rocky, they were up against the wall, just as big as that. So they built a wooden horse, big enough for the soldiers to get in, and pretended they were defeated and left it. So these Trojans got itching with curiosity, that horse sitting out there all alone, and hauled it in. And just like that, Rocky, the soldiers got in, and the Trojans were defeated. And we use the spaceship as a Trojan horse. Is that what you're thinking, Bobby? 
I'm not thinking anything in particular, Rocky. I'm just telling you what I read. Yes, it might work. Now, we'll all leave from the tail section hatch, as if agreeing to Bavar's ultimatum to abandon the spaceship. They'll think we're going to live in exile on the other side of the moon. Now, Bavaro doesn't know about the escape hatch on the starboard side of the ship, so, Winky, you and I will sneak back in and hope that human nature hasn't changed. Right. Bobby, the orbit jet will be the Trojan horse, and Bavaro will open the gates and pull us into the city. Professor Newton, you and Bobby stay hidden in the jungle. If Winky and I win the fight and rescue Vina, we'll find you. Bobby forgot to tell us how they won the fight once they were inside the walls. I'm afraid I can't help on that point either, Winky. We'd better take positions. They'll be entering the ship any moment. RV-5 to Space Station OW-9. RV-5 to OW-9, come in, Higgins. Space Station OW-9 to RV-5, Higgins to Clark. How's the family, Clark? Great. You should see the youngster. What's behind the United World's communication hookup? I hear all frequencies are tied in for a Space Ranger announcement. It's an address by Secretary Drake. Something big. I don't know what. I'll talk to you later, Higgins. Space station RV-5 to all communication frequencies. Alert, learn this. Clear and stand by for an address from Secretary Drake. Count four, count three, count two, count one. Space station RV-5 to Earth headquarters, Space Rangers. Clark to Secretary Drake. We are ready, Mr. Secretary.
This is Secretary Drake. I have waited until the last possible moment, until the last ray of hope has vanished, before speaking these words. Hmm. War. Without blood ties, there was a man to whom I had the proud feeling of being a father. Rocky. It is now my sorrowful duty to announce that Rocky Jones is missing. In the service of the Space Rangers, this man dedicated his life to helping his friends and solving the problems of the united worlds of the solar system. Those people with beliefs the opposite of ours, even their leader, Cleolanta, feared and respected this man for his bravery, for his skill, for his fairness. What is it, Cleolanta? This, my dear Atlas San, is our relay of a speech by Secretary Drake. It's about Rocky Jones. As precaution against further loss of lives, I now order the search for the orbit jet to cease. All space rangers devoted to the task are to turn back. Long live the memory of Rocky Jones and his loyal crew. Winky, Dina, little Bobby, and Professor Newton. We don't have. Nothing, Rocky. Just that other moon, Nagato, and the atmosphere chain. You know, it's sort of creepy traveling through space on a gypsy moon. And no sign of a space ranger ship. <laughs> Not a sign. You know, Wiki, right now back on Earth, there must be a long overdue hope gone report on the orbit jet. Yeah, I understand, sir. So we can't expect any help from the outside. We need power for a 4.7 escape velocity. And the one person who can help us has declared himself our enemy. So far. There he goes again. Where's he hauling us? You know, Rocky, maybe releasing Bavaro and holding the others wasn't such a good idea after all. Well, Winky, we can't force him to do what we want. I was hoping Quotanda could influence him. Come on. Oh, Vina, since you're beginning to understand Quotanda's native words, Maybe we ought to pay her a visit and see if she'll ask for Varro to come to the spaceship. Perhaps we can use the translator to effect some sort of compromise. Certainly, Rocky. Am I in on this one, Rocky? Well, you'd better stay here with Professor Newton and Bobby. Ready, Vina? Yeah. Hey. Good luck, Quacky Bones. Well, Bobby, how's the Odyssey coming? What's happening with that guy Ulysses? Right now, I'm reading about his hometown of Ithaca. They haven't heard a word from Ulysses in a long time. And they all think he's dead. 
Come on. to see you torn up by a Taurus tiger. <laughs> Take your hand off of that stupid or I'll knock all your teeth out. <laughs> yes, sir. Why, you big-footed ape? Why don't you keep your feet out of the aisle? Navarro, we're anxious to be on our way to Earth. Do you have the materials to rebuild our equipment? And will you help us? Navarro says he's the greatest electrical wizard who's ever lived. He'll help us, but we must promise to do what he asks. Yes, destroy the sister moon, Nagato. There he goes again. Tolva Nagato. Tolva Nagato! Identify an airship similar to yours. Matanga! Mano, Tantra! Awakey, take post to translator. I want to know what they're saying. Yes, sir. Bobby! Yes, Rocky? Take us in there and hold it for a pickup on their words. And be careful. came through the atmosphere chain from Nagato. Savar believes he knows how to fire our missiles. He's going to shoot the airplane down. Come on, Winky.
at all. So positive. Rotonda is defending the actions of Bavaro. Nagato was the aggressor and enslaved the people of Posita for a long time. But now Bavaro has made Posita the more powerful moon. Rotonda, what was that strange noise from the airship? It is called Nagato music, Rocky, which destroys a man's intelligence and ambition. Some of Bavaro's finest warriors have been trapped by its spell. Goodness gracious. Bavaro is afraid that someday all of Posita will be trapped by this spell. That's why he wants you to destroy Nagato. Kotando, have you always been at war with Nagato? Yes, Rocky. Thousands of years ago, there was one planet called Electro. The people were united until they learned how to harness the power of lightning. The planet was exploded into two moons. That explains the atmosphere chain that links Posita and Negato. Thank you, Kotanda. Oh, Winky. Yes, Rocky. Bring Bavaro to the translator. Right away, sir. about this Nagato music. Well, in the Odyssey, they had some sirens on an island that had this music that did exactly the same thing. And this, he sure had a rough time. for your help to repair the spaceship, I will go to Nagato and try to arrange an understanding between the two moons. You have my solemn promise, Bavaro. This will be done before we resume our journey back to Earth. Torva Nagato. Nagato Torvak Ilvox. He's pleading with you to destroy Nagato. Says your plan to go there is impossible. I'll have to take the chance, Bavaro. I'll take any chance to get my crew back to Earth. And this plan is the only grounds on which we can bargain. Baval, a black soul. A black soul. A black soul. Danger! Come inside. What do you know, Rocky? A magnetic derrick. Alert crew for a quick blast off, Winky. Yes, sir. Alert. Orbit jet ready for QBO. Secure, please. All set? Set, sir. Successful. We're now in normal space flight. You may come forward. Oh, Bobby. Yes, Professor Newton. Perhaps you'd better tell Rocky about Ulysses' encounter with the siren. Sure, Professor. Sure. <laughs> Sang this music which had the same effect on people as Nagato music. 
Well, you know she's being real smart. Stuffed cotton in everybody's ears. Everybody's, Bobby? Well, no, Rocky. Not in his own. But he had his crew tied to a mast, real tight, so he couldn't get loose and run around wild. Sounds like a good idea. Stay in the spaceship. Alert, learn this. Landing successful, you may come forward. Give me a hand with the space helmets. Rocky, the atmosphere. Rocky, what's the matter with this aircraft? Nothing, Vina. Oh, goodness gracious, isn't there an atmosphere? Yes, Professor. But with sound cut off, these will serve as Ulysses Cotton for the ears of his crew. I get it. So the Nagato music can't get to us, huh? Hey, Rocky, aren't you going to pull the plug on your sound? Can't do it, Winky. I've learned enough words from the translator to talk to Torvac. I have to hear what he says. So if Nagato music starts to affect me, I'll pull this. All right, fix your helmets to leave the spaceship. But, Rocky, you're liable to fall under the spell of the music. Yes, Rocky. There's the danger of your mind being destroyed. Look, can't we tie you up maybe... Just use a little rope, huh?
Torvac. Go on. Von Vex Torvac. Quando il pond va negat. Vina has helped him. Torvac is talking again. For the first time in years, I feel calm and at peace with myself. I realize now what a fiendish weapon Nagato music has been. What can I do to bring about a peaceful alliance with Bavaro? Professor Newton will explain to you the laws of the United Worlds. They will be of great help in bringing about a peaceful uniting of your two moons. If you please, Professor. With great pleasure. Winky, Bobby. Prepare for blast off, Mickey. Yes, sir. If Torvac agrees, we'll go back to the Zeta and pick up Bavaro. Oh, I thought you meant blast off for Earth. Well, sorry, Vina, we have to see this through. I promise, Torvac. Well, I sure hope it doesn't take too long. I want folks to know I'm alive. You know, there's a girl back in... Oh, Winky, she'll be true to you. The longer the absence, the warmer the kiss. Yeah. You know, I'll bet that guy Ulysses sure got a warm welcome when he got home. It didn't work out that way, Winky. It didn't? Some folks took advantage of Ulysses being away and everyone thinking he was dead. They practically ruined everything he had worked for. You sent for me, Cleolata? Listen to this, Dr. Sand. The XV-2 to Space Station RV-5. Rocky Jones to Clark. Come in, Clark. Rocky Jones? Alive? Of course not. But his voice is. I have lengthy recordings here in the recording. Taken in space and made when he was here in Ophetius. I want the United Worlds and Secretary Drake to believe that the lost Rocky Jones has found his way back. I want them to hear it from his own lips and be sure. You know, it's funny, Rocky. People like Bavaro and Torvac think they have to fight each other to exist. But you get them together, talk sense, and they find out that peace and helping each other is the answer. Goodbye, Bavaro. Torvac. Why don't you and Cleolanda sit down for a nice, quiet little chat? I tried that once, Winky. Remember? <laughs> Alert. Alert. Learn this. Destination Earth. Secure for blast off. Destination Earth. Best words I've heard in a long time. All set, Skipper. This is Rocky Jones. This is Rocky Jones. This is Rocky. While Rocky Jones was alive, he was no one's puppet. But now I work the strings which control his voice. We're in the Space Ranger's communication band now, Cleolanta. Whenever you're ready, Atlas Fan. XV-2 attempting space station pickup. Can you hear me? Orbit Jet, the XV-2 calling. Come in. Orbit Jet to space station. Can you hear me? Come in. Rocky. Rocky, you made it. You're alive. Good to be back. Sorry to cause concern, but today was the first time I could communicate. Well, you made it, Rocky. That's the only thing that matters. How are the others? Vina, Professor Newton, Winky, and Bobby are all fine. Do we need to help getting in, Rocky? 
I'm not coming in right now, but please arrange a voice relay to Earth. Of course, Rocky. And give me a clearance at 1400. I have a message for Secretary Drake. I want to deliver it in my own voice. Sure, Rocky. And will Drake be glad to hear it? Over until 1400. Over. Well, Mr. Secretary, your fondness for the late Rocky Jones is going to lead you into a trap which will entangle all the united worlds of the solar system. Why must the hands of the clock move so slowly? Won't 1400 ever get here? Think that I shall soon hear Rocky's voice and see his face again. I knew he'd be back. When will it be 1400? Dina, Professor, Bobby, come forward, please. We're nearing the Space Ranger communication band. I have the tune in signal. We should hear something now. This is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet. Come in. Goodness gracious! Rocky, who, who, what is that? XV-2 to space station OW-9. Are you ready with my relay? Come in. Higgins on OW-9. Ready, Mr. Secretary. Go ahead, Rocky. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Sorry for the anxiety I've caused, but we couldn't communicate. Rocky, it's wonderful to hear your voice. Where have you been? We were trapped by the escape velocity of Sagata's third moon. Sagata? We've never even been to Sagata. Rocky, what's going on? Rocky, we've all given up hope of your return. My best to your crew. Higgins tells me they're all safe. Yes, Mr. Secretary. When will you be back? Mr. Secretary, with your permission, I would like to alter course and head for Ankapur. Ankapur, Rocky. Yes, Mr. Secretary. And I urgently request that you meet me there as soon as possible. It's a trap. Mr. Secretary, can you hear me? This is Rocky Jones. Can you hear me? Come in. Higgins on the OW-9. Can you hear me? Come in. We can't reach them. But Rocky, I prefer that you return to Earth. We'll discuss the matter, and if advisable, leave together. But Mr. Secretary, Angkor is holding an election to decide whether to join United Worlds or the Ophetians. Pilata will surely be there, and we'll be too late. Very well, Rocky. I'll make immediate plans to leave. Goodbye, Rocky, until we meet on Angkor. Goodbye, sir. And Higgins, I'll refuel on the OW-9, and you'll take command of the spaceship on the flight to Angkor. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Over and out. Out, Mr. Secretary. Who is it, Rocky? Who is talking to Secretary Drake? Cleo Lanter? Undoubtedly. But, Rocky, that was your voice. Partly. They had a recording of my voice, and then mechanically altered another voice to match it. All right, we're underway. We'll get into communication reach to the OW-9 as soon as possible, and expose all this. Aye, aye, sir. Goodness gracious! An infernal meteor. Quick, Winky. Try to shake it off before the heat spreads. Yes, sir. Seal off the control and navigation section, Winky. And no one is to leave. The meteor is stuck pretty far back, so the fire door should hold. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Up the escape hatch. But Rocky, if... if the Kron steel of the orbit jet can't stand the heat, what's going to happen to a space suit?
fight. Fire was fire. We can't even pick up the space station signal. Rolling over, trying to shake off the meteor, we're completely out of communication. I'm Secretary Drake. He'll be on the moon anchor for long before our words can reach him. That's rough, hot work, Rocky. We have plenty of hours involved before we can get moving. Take a rest, Winky. It's my turn. Oh, but you just got out of there. Oh, Rocky. What can we do now? How can we ever rescue Secretary Drake? The officials will surely be in control of Anchor Paul. Bobby will brief you on future orders. Bobby? I'm going to brief you on future orders? The book you're studying, Bobby. The Odyssey. Oh, sure. Zena, Winky, Professor Newton, we'll all become beggars. And so will Rocky. Beggars? Well, goodness gracious. Ulysses was in a spot just like this. When he got back home, his kingdom was overthrown because folks thought he was dead. In order to find out what was going on and how to stop it, he dressed up like a beggar. Do you get it, Winky? No. Maybe I better read that book. Destination Anchorpore is directly ahead. I can now request landing permission. Please do, Higgins, immediately. And find out if Rocky Jones has landed as yet. Yes, sir. Space Ranger Ship XV-7 requesting landing time. Come in, Anchorpore Control. Moon Anchorpore to the XV-7. This is La Volga, elected potentate of Anchorpore. We'll bring you into the subterranean spaceship dock. Yes, sir. And please, sir, has Rocky Jones landed yet? Several days ago. He's impatiently awaiting the arrival of Secretary Drake. We'll be right in, sir. Over to Anchorpore. Over and out. Yes? Mayna, please, may I see Rocky? Certainly. I have wonderful news for Rocky, Vina. Really? Oh, Rocky, it is La Volga. Hello, Volga. Secretary Drake has just requested landing clearance. Fine, be glad to see the old boy. We've all been anxious for this moment, La Volga. So if you will excuse us, we will get ready to meet him. Of course, Vina. Goodbye, Rocky. Goodbye, La Volga. It is never old boy. I warned you to refer to Drake with respect. Oh, Cleolanda, what's the matter? I am Vina. And don't make the mistake again, Rocky. Oh, all right. How do you expect to handle Secretary Drake? After staring at this for a while, Secretary Drake will address the universe with words of my choosing. Poor beggar boy. You sure did a good job, Vina. When will your costume be ready? Well, I'm almost finished, Bobby. Goodness gracious, Vina, you can't expect me to wear this. You know the same, Professor Newton, and Rocky agrees. Sometimes a good disguise is better than a suit of armor. Come on, let's go show Rocky. Arms. Arms. Oh, poor, poor beggar boy. Oh, Bobby. Now, Rocky, look. Just look at this. Anchor is on all frequencies. This is a proud moment in the history of Anchor Power. Secretary Drake is now in ellipse, and Rocky Jones, who is already in our underground city, has announced that they will both speak to the universe later today. 
Yes, this is Cleolanta's work, all right. She'll use my voice and give Drake the hypnotic treatment to force him to say whatever she wants. Well, we got a long, hard trip ahead of us, Rocky. And Rocky, once we're there, will they allow us to land? I believe so, Vina. I understand the city's more like a bazaar than anything else. Anyone is welcome to trade or buy. Anchor control to Space Ranger ship XV-7. We have you under control. Landing time is now instantaneous. Plus five. Plus four. Plus three. Plus two. Here you are, Mr. Secretary. I'll arrange quarters for Higgins, your space ranger, and come back. Thank you, LaVolga. Yes? Vina, it is Secretary Drake. Please, Mr. Secretary, come in. Oh, Vina, it is so good to... Why, who are you? Cleolanta, Mr. Secretary. And Rocky Jones? Hi, boss man. Sorry, Mr. Secretary, but we fight for different beliefs. And fight in different ways. Then Rocky Jones isn't alive? No, Mr. Secretary. You expected the impossible. Bring him over here. Fix it up for us to get together. Oh. You spoke with Secretary Drake. What did he say? Oh. I can't understand him. He didn't talk like himself. It was a very strange thing. I saw this film. Vina being busy, the big confab coming up, and why can't I meet Bobby and Professor Newton? Arms! Arms! Bobby, arms. Professor Newton? Well, there was no one with Rocky Jones except Vina and a space ranger. That must have been Winky. Yes, that's the name. But what happened to Bobby and the professor? Arms! 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 Doubt about it, Rocky. That's Higgins. And he was saying that Secretary Drake didn't act like himself. Clear on his work. All right, nigger boy. On your way. Penny for a dancing girl. Penny. Pennies for a dancing girl. Bobby's sure that space ranger with the Lavolga is Higgins. Bring him to the alley. Tell him who you are if necessary, but be sure no one overhears you. After the meeting, you and your friends will be all together. See my city and enjoy yourself. Here, 
Jenny. Jenny. Pennies for a dancing girl? I'm sorry, sister. I've got things on my mind. Higgins, you must listen. Hmm? Who knows my name way out here in Ankapur? I'm Zena. You must recognize my voice from Astro Phone. We've talked a dozen times. Zena? Well, for it. Vina? Vina from the orbit jet, I mean? Hey, what is this? Yes, Higgins, listen to me. Yes, Higgins, what's that you have? Oh, so it's Vina again. Now go ahead, tell me you're Winky. Yeah. And I suppose you're Rocky Jones. That's right. Secretary Drake spoke to me from that opening. Give me a boost, Winky. Yes, Mr. Secretary. Rocky Jones will speak, and then you will confirm his words. The entire universe is standing by to hear you both. Atlas Ann, put Rocky Jones' speech in the voice conveyor. Perhaps you'd like to listen to a rehearsal, Mr. Secretary. Fellow people of the United Worlds, this is Space Ranger Rocky Jones. In one moment, Secretary Drake will speak and confirm my belief that many planets and moons governed by United Worlds truly belong to the Ephesians, and that they... No, no! Rocky would never say a thing like that. Take him in there. He must be ready to broadcast my message. for the opening address. We are ready. Yes, Cleo Anna. Atlas go in the other room and operate Rocky's voice. You may come back in for a bow afterwards. Please, La Volga. We were on a five count. This is a proud moment for me, Vina. This is La Volga, elected potentan of the Free Moon Anchor Paul. Secretary Drake and Space Ranger Rocky Jones have seen fit to visit my neutral moon and make a declaration. The next voice you hear will be that of Rocky Jones. Fellow people of the United Worlds, this is Space Ranger Rocky Jones. At this moment, Secretary Drake cannot speak. But when he can, he will announce a hoax which was perpetrated on La Volga, the fine leader of Ankapur, and a hoax which could have done great harm to the United Worlds of the solar system. Six. Rocky. Rocky Jones. 
it. I knew it. That you'd be back. That just about ends our little odyssey. That is, unless there's something else in the book. That's all. Things got straightened out back in Ithaca like they have in Ankapur with the United Worlds. And Rocky's got Ulysses beat a thousand ways. Oh, Bobby. Well, how's that, Bobby? I thought you always stuck up for that guy, Ulysses. Well, you know the way our trip has sort of been like the odyssey? Yeah, go on. I didn't want to say this before because I didn't want to worry you. But in the odyssey, Ulysses was the only one who got back home alive. His whole crew was lost. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, 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 Bobby,